Praise the Lord. I want to talk about push prayer, which stands for pray until something happens. It's a way, it's a method of prayer where you can guarantee that you are sure with certainty that your prayer has already been answered before the manifestation of the results. It's called push. Pray until something happens. The acronym is PUSH. P-U-S-H. It can also stand for pray until supernatural happens. You're going to see the seven things that you look for before you know of being guaranteed or assured and completely certain that your prayer has already gone through into God's system and that God has answered your prayer. Now, you can apply push prayer when it comes to emergency situations. You can apply it in stubborn cases uh, during intercession, standing in the gap, for breakthrough, for warfare, prayer, prophetic prayer, healing prayer, deliverance prayer, and prayer of financial miracle of turnaround. Now, the acronym PUSH stands for pray until something happens or pray until supernatural happens. It is for in instant breakthrough and miracle of turnaround. The old Pentecostals understand this concept. Uh, we call it concept of fervent prayer. Sometimes they call it shutting or tarry prayer. And sometimes they call it praying through to break through. It can also mean, and you can also use it for difficult cases, very bleeding, recalcitrant, stubborn cases. Uh, midnight prayer, early morning prayer, uh, especially praying in tongue in long hours before you guarantee result. They sometimes call this tarry prayer with tarry meetings or shutting until the Holy Spirit shows up to manifest immediate miracle or immediate results. You sense it in your spirit and I will show you how. Now, you understand also that push prayers focus on one specific prayer point or prayer bullet with laser sharp accuracy and targeted precision. It's based on the principle that the infinite always want the finite to be definite and specific. God doesn't answer generic, random, hit and miss, faithless prayers. That is the accuracy, the guarantee, and the beauty of push prayer. Here is one of the many reasons or one or more things you should see and that you know that your prayer has been answered in push. Number one, you sense a release in your spirit after praying for long hours that that stuff is already done, it's already taken care of. The old Pentecostal called this, the burden has lifted. That's what they normally say. Number two, you, you begin to sense a note of victory or green light in your human spirit. Uh, by that it means you should move on to other things or areas that may need your attention. You hear inner witnesses of the still small voice of the Holy Spirit, which we call gentle whisper, saying it is done. Number three things you will expect sometimes in combination, is you don't feel like revisiting it again or praying about the same topic again. This is where faith assurance comes in. You know, some people tell you that you don't do repetitive prayer. Well, this one, you must keep on praying about one thing, praying through, especially praying long hours in tongues, 
or praying the word, but you focus on this prayer topic and make sure it's done. So you are not praying. When you are praying the word of God, you are not doing repetition. The word of God is never repetitive, especially when you are praying the word in spirit, when you are praying the word in tongues, when you are praying perpetually in the Holy Spirit. So it's not vain repetition like they quote in Matthew. And it's not faithlessness if you focus on one thing and make sure you have a note of victory or assurance within your spirit that is taken care of. Number four, the fruit of peace, uh, which is the fruit of spirit, which I call the peace test. Peace is one of the fruit, nine fruit of the spirit. And we call this the umpire in your heart, according to Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Also, Colossians uh, 3.15a says, And let the peace of God rule in your heart. Number five reason or five factor that you might notice or experience in your heart of us, you begin to understand that this thing is taken care of and you don't need to pray for that. Holy laughter, which I call the happy side of God. Uh, you know, the Bible said that the joy of the Lord is your strength. And if the joy of the Lord is your strength, the Lord himself is your strength and your shield. I trust him with all my heart. He helps me and my heart is filled with joy. I bust that in songs of thanksgiving. It's taken in Psalm 28 verse 7. Number 6. This one is a biggie. The unexplained spiritual song by the Holy Spirit begins to break forth out of your heart. We call this spiritual song. You begin to sing from nowhere or from the blues. It shows you've broken through to break out. It's found in Ephesians 5.19. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord. And number seven, the final one. And I reserve it for the last. There's reassurance in your heart of us, in your human spirit. Or there's testimony bubbling in your heart called the inner witness coupled with the outer boldness or confidence or the God kind of faith talk. This is like thanksgiving popping up out of nowhere. Truly, praise is the language of faith. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Hebrew 11 verse 1 according to English standard version and then another complementary revelation supporting this fact is that now that this faith has come we have no longer uh, we are no longer rather under a garden that's in Galatians 3 25 and I want to explain how this kind of prayer works having shown you the things that you will expect in your heart or heart to know that a note of victory, assurance, fully persuasion, and things you notice or experience or fathom or sense in the spirit to know that that prayer has been answered. You know, I was praying with somebody. This was like uh, 12, 13 years ago. And when I was praying with her, she's a Catholic. She doesn't know anything about the Bible or much about the Bible or Pentecostal move of the Spirit. And it was regarding her mother's papers. It's supposed to take three months, but the, it's already taking nine months and more. So I said, let's pray. And we tarried long hours in prayer that day. And after the prayer, surprisingly to me, because I explained to her, how push prayer works. She called the mom that, oh, mom, your papers will be released. Mom said, look, I've been waiting for this little thing. Did you call them? Did they call you? Did they send a letter? Because they, she, she was filing for the mom. The, she said, no, that we've just prayed. I have a note of victory. I have assurance in my spirit that it's already taken care of. And sure enough, 
within three days, she received her approval in the mail. The thing that was held up, the paper that was uh, were laid or delayed or denied, God gave us miracle of turnaround. I mean, she didn't have anything uh, in terms of experience as a Pentecostal or somebody that is in the world. I just taught her how to pray the push prayer. We prayed that night together and her breakthrough came. In fact, she was even telling the mom, giving testimony, talking with assurance, with faith, with boldness, with tenacity, and with confidence, even when she has not seen physical manifestation. And sure enough, the physical manifestation came. The same thing with another friend of mine. The sister was traveling somewhere in Africa, and there was a witch in that car. Actually, it was a bus, uh, a bus, a minibus. So there was a baby close by. And, you know, people carry people's baby, was admiring the beautiful baby. So she took the baby, not knowing that there's a witch there making incantation and putting a spell on the car for the car to have an accident. So she released the baby to the mom when the car was tumbling and, uh, uh, and having problems. They, were, they knew that they were already in trouble. So thank God, the, car, uh, uh, the bus capsided, and ev eventually, every one of them made it. But the witch started saying, oh, oh, I'm surprised nobody died in this car. Nobody died in this uh, bus. But something happened here in the U United States, because I was with the friend who is the brother to this very lady in question that was traveling in Africa. They were praying. So why they were praying? My friend John had a note of warning, a burden to keep on praying. There were three praying, Johnny, Sino, and John. Sino went to eat. Few hours later, Johnny left. But John did not have any release to stop praying. He kept on praying, kept on praying, kept on praying. Do you know he didn't even know? It was later on when the sister called to report the accident that she was saved from an accident, that she was delivered from an accident by the Lord. And he looked at the time and the time zone and the time he was interceding. It was when that car was tumbling and when that old witch set that uh, vehicle up for accident. So were it not for the fact that he continued to tarry in prayer, to break through, to have a note of victory, the sister would have died in Africa, considering the time zone. So this is the power of the push prayer. You use it for miracle of turnaround. You can even see your miracle manifest or breakthrough manifest before you see the physical expression of physical materialization in the natural. It's a very powerful type of prayer. Usually, you pray in tongues for hours, and at some point, the Holy Ghost take over the prayer. And you pray and pray and pray. I can give testimony upon testimony the power of this kind of prayer. Don't stop praying until you notice these seven cardinal points I've just catered for us. Thank you, Dr. Zoh. Bye-bye.